All right, in part two here of sketching up our house or my house, we are going to start by decorating the first floor and then add the roof. I already have my pictures, I already have my dimensions, I need to just jump into SketchUp here and get going. All right, so you can see I got the first floor finished from the last video. Now let's do something a little fun. Let's decorate it, use this paint bucket tool. And you can see that it opens the materials pane here on the right side of the screen. And we're going to search for the colors, materials that we want to decorate the house with. So first, let's do some siding. And it just so happens they have a gray siding that's very similar to the siding that I have on my house. Just click on the face where you want the siding to appear. Rotate, find the wall where you want the siding, click the paint bucket, click on the face, and you can see that now we have siding that matches my house. Similarly, we can also decorate the windows. They have glass and mirrors. If you accidentally apply the paint bucket to a face that you don't want it to be on, you can always use Control Z or Command Z to undo whatever your last mistake was. As you can see, my house has lots of green trim. I can also do that by going to the colors palette and I can choose many, from many, many colors here and I can go ahead and put in green trim on all my windows. All right, with that done, it's time to put on the roof. So I'm going to rotate my view so that I can see the side of the house so that I can draw the triangular side view of the roof and then I'll be able to pull that across the rest of the house to create the full roof. I'm going to use guidelines from the tape measure tool just like I did before, but this is going to be a little more complicated because it's not going to be just about making rectangles. I'm going to make a guideline that coincides with the top edge of the first floor. So it's going to be offset zero inches. It's going to be right there on that edge. Then on either side of my house, I'm going to offset with a guideline 6 inches because my eaves overhang 6, six inches. Remember, when making guidelines, click on the edge, let go, move in the direction you want the guideline, type the distance that you want. So in the case of my eaves, I type in 6 and then double quotes and hit enter for 6 inches. The distance from the first floor to the top of the roof line is 8 feet. So I'm going to put a guideline up 8 feet from the first floor. Now to finish the roof, I need to know the center line of the side view of the house. So I click on the right edge, let go, drift over towards the middle, come up to the top line segment of the first floor. You'll see a blue dot hovering there in the middle. Click, and then you found the center line of the house. Now I want to draw the roof deck, but I don't want to use the tape measure tool. And I use that incorrectly. So you can press the escape button if you're using the incorrect tool. I'm going to go to the pencil tool and now draw the outline of the roof. You can see that as soon as the shape is closed, it fills in and becomes a 2D shape. Probably getting ahead of myself, but I'm going to make some parallel lines so that I can show where the trim is on the end of this side of the house. Now that we know what the side view it looks like for that second floor, and we have it drawn, we can use the push-pull tool to pull that across until it meets the other side of the house. I can do that with the trim as well. Now you can see I have the roof completed. Now we need to decorate it up a little bit. You can see I have an extra line here between the first floor and the second floor. You can click on it with the arrow tool, press delete, and that line will disappear. Whoops, looks like we have a mistake here. Somehow when I push pulled, I didn't I lost that original side of the roof. I can easily fix that with the pencil tool. Just go to every corner 
and draw and reconnect those and eventually it's going to close that shape again. When you're done drawing with the pencil tool you can press the escape key and it will stop drawing. All right, time to decorate the roof. We have some trim that's going to be green. Uh, so click the paint bucket tool, go to colors. I can find the color that matches my trim. Now what's going to make this look really good and really realistic is if we go back into the materials find roofing materials and find some shingles. We can apply that to the roof deck. Now that I got the roof on there, I got my second story, I need to add in my windows that are on either end of the house. Just going to use my guidelines, find the correct locations, and then draw in the windows. Finally, as you can see, I have this little dormer on the right side of the front side of the house. I need to add that on. The dormer is about 12 feet in width, so I'm going to make a guideline from the right edge of the house over 12 feet. I'm also going to put a guideline right on that right edge of the house. I'm doing this all with a goal of being able to take that bottom edge of the roof there and slide it over towards the center of the house to reveal the face where I want to build the dormer. So you can see the guideline has cut a portion of that roof line. But to really cut it, I need to use the pencil to draw that line in. Then I can use the push-pull tool to slide it in the direction of my 12-foot guideline. Now I need to put a 6-foot guideline over from the right side. That's going to mark the middle of that dormer. Then I need another guideline coming up from the top of the first floor to mark the top of the ridge line of the dormer. Once I have the guidelines that I need, I use the pencil tool and sketch out the outline needed for the dormer. And when the sides are completed, it'll fill that in as a triangle. Then, if I rotate my view with the rotate tool, I can see the back side of that dormer, and I use the push-pull tool to pull it back into the roof, and you can see that the dormer is now complete. just needs a little bit of decorating. Now, sometimes I try to delete lines that appear to be unnecessary in it, it messes up some of the shapes. Uh, in those cases, I just undo and leave the line there. I don't want to mess up the overall drawing just because of smaller uh, lines that are showing up. All right, so this is pretty much finished. Just got a couple cosmetic details here to finish up. Here is what my house looks like now. Now in the future, I can use this model to test out different designs, remodels, or additions.